Hello travelers so happy to see you again and so happy and excited to introduce this place to you but before that i want to thank all of our travelers across the globe for the immense response and support you have given us for the kerala virtual tour now if you are watching me for the first time and do not know what this is all about kerala virtual tour is a program that's exclusively crafted by kerala tourism to bring to you some of the major touristic attractions or touristic destinations in kerala we conducted a poll through the Kerala tourism website uh, with many categories beaches was the first one and you chose Kovalam as your favorite beach destination in Kerala then we went on to the hill stations and Munar emerged as the most voted one the third category was backwaters and right now at one of the most uh, exciting and interesting touristic destination in Kerala famous for its backwaters also called as the Venice of the East and there are a variety of reasons that people choose this place as the most favorite backwater destination like the uh, snake boat races and of course the lakes and many other reasons that I'm going to show you in the next two hours so this place is Alapura I did not want to miss the sunrise so I reached Alapura last night itself from Trivandrum by road but if you are coming from a different state or a country the nearest airport is uh, Kochi you could even uh, choose the Trivandrum airport but you'll have to drive for another three to three and a half hours to reach Alapura so right now I am on my way to Padra Manal bird sanctuary which is very famous for um, a variety of uh, species of birds and I'm hoping I would uh, spot some variety ones today or some some rare ones today and it is also famous for village life experience and the people there collect the uh, uh, the mussels or the shells uh, through a process called as shell extruding and I have an exciting news while I'm on my way to Padra Manal now if you're someone who would like to uh, take a staycation or you know just uh, move away and stay for a, somewhere else for a while then Kerala Tourism is offering you four nights stay in a premium KTDC hotel and you could win that by just registering and voting for the next uh, category in the Kerala Tourism website so what is the next category? The next category is village life experience. So right now you should go and visit the Kerala tourism website and vote for the best village life experience in Kerala.
it's the local fishermen uh, that you see in the country boats behind me here doing their daily job which is clam collection it seems they start at about 4 am in the morning to do this uh, uh, routine and earlier they used to go under the water to collect the clams but right now they've become more advanced and started using the baskets and the nets and they collect about 25 kg on an average in a day and uh, the meat is sold to the local traders uh, but the shell is taken up by the uh, society here which is again sold to uh, different states honestly i have no clue what the shells are used for maybe for jewelry making but apart from that i have no clue what it is used for but if you know the answer for it drop a comment in the comment box i will soon reach padra manal and i'll have more stories to share with you Tantanang. So on the way to Padra Manal, you can spot uh, water lilies like this, and I also spotted it and asked the boat captain if I could spend some time here. So he found a country boat for me, and here I am plucking the water lilies. They are usually found from December to May for about six months, and then uh, they just die off. So it's the right time that I visited here and enjoying the scenic beauty in the backwaters. these water lilies are usually wide open in the mornings but uh, as it goes towards the noon they just shut the petals and then they open the next morning but what beauty right i can't get enough of plucking these i would love to see them on the waters but uh, too selfish so i want some on my hands too What a beautiful place. Apart from the chirping of the birds, literally you can't hear anything here. Uh, I, I got into the boat from the Kai Prajati, so it just took about 10 minutes for me to get in here. But if you are taking the boat from uh, Mohamma, it's going to go about uh, 30 minutes. But nevertheless, you can enjoy the backwaters and have a longer boat journey if you take uh, the boat from Mohamma. So let me get inside Padra Manal and see the birds. And I'm hoping to see a lot of migratory birds here. And uh, this is not going to go waste. So follow me to see the beauty of Padra Manal.
I heard that there are about 91 species of local birds and uh, 50 migratory birds that can be found here. Then there's 50 different types of trees, then spiders, insects. You know, this is really a true heaven for nature lovers because it's full of greenery, chirping of the birds. It's, it's always advised to come here early in the morning because it will be less hot and uh, you know the birds are just waking up and you hear the noise and there's not many people here. So uh, like I told earlier, it's a true heaven for nature lovers. Some of the names of the birds that I could remember or recollect from my memory are pintail ducks and common teal, night heron. Um, I don't know, there are plenty of them. So I'm just hoping that I at least get to see five of them, hoping. hear some fluttering of the wings but I don't find anything just hoping at least I could spot five different varieties not that I know the difference between them but uh, I really want to you know experience this because I've never been to a, a bird sanctuary before this is not just a bird sanctuary you can find like I told you a variety of trees and there's a mangrove uh, uh, forest also here and if you want to take a uh, you know round around this island you can pay an additional fee and uh, hire a boat and go around the uh, island itself which will give you more opportunities for seeing uh, more birds but uh, I think I'm already late here and um, see it's just me around here and nobody else and so I'm having my time and this is what I like also because it's very quiet I really can feel the nature right now which is what I want People, quick tip for you, don't forget to bring your water bottles um, or snacks because this is a plastic free zone so you don't get uh, any snacks or water here so remember to carry your water bottles. I am still listening. I could hear it before but I think Wow, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. You always hear about the rich flora and fauna, right? This is rich flora and fauna because everywhere you look, even the waters are green. Trees, you, you barely can see the sky because it's like a canopy covered with trees, different varieties of trees, different varieties of birds, amazing place, maybe less explored but amazing place and you should be here.
I'm winding up exploring Padra Manal, but before I go, I want to remind you to bring your water bottle and snacks while you're coming to Padra Manal. But please, please, and please do not litter this place because it is the duty of every citizen and every traveler to conserve the place that wherever you're visiting. And Padra Manal is one of the treasures of Kerala. So please make sure that you do not litter this place and let's conserve this beauty for generations to come. I'm right now at Eremalur in Alapura and it's about 40 kilometers from the Alapura town and my next destination is Kakaturta which is right behind me. It's a very small island and as the name suggests it's the island of crows. The main attraction here is the sunset and that's exactly what I'm here for. Kakaturta has been featured in National Geographic's Around the World in 24 hours program as well. So let's see what's special for us there and stay close to watch Kakaturta. I'm on my way to Kakaturta right now in this boat. This is a bigger boat but uh, there are smaller country boats provided by the panchayat from 6 a.m. in the morning to 9.30 p.m. in the evening. Uh, the local residents here at Kakaturita can make use of these small country boats. Uh, while I am enjoying my uh, boat ride to Kakaturita, you should go to Kerala Tourism website and register and also vote for the next category which is uh, open, that is Village Life Experience. You should vote for your favourite destination in Kerala for Village Life Experience. And also don't forget the fact that a registered voter gets the chance to win four nights stay at a premium KTBC hotel. So don't miss the opportunity while I enjoy my boat ride, go and vote uh, in Kerala Tourism website. I have reached one of the sunset points at Kakaturita, the island of crows. You can see lush greenery everywhere, uh, sea blue waters, blue skies and coconut palms. What more do you need to enjoy your sunset, right? So while I wait for the sun to set, you should visit our website keralatourism.org and cast your votes for the next category of destinations which is village life experience. And some of the voters would also get a chance to win four nights stay in one of the premium KTDC hotels. So don't miss this opportunity. While I wait for the sun to set, go and cast your votes and come right back to enjoy it along with me. Thank you. 
Hi again travelers I am up very early morning today to experience much closer the real life of the people here at Alapura so I've decided to go canoeing or kayaking through the canals of Alapura and there are a lot of these canals that connects the lagoons and the backwaters and it's the best way to experience the everyday life of the people here at Alapura while I was waiting for my canoe I saw this huge paddy field that I couldn't resist to walk into so right now here i am in middle of a paddy field and it's such a beautiful view i hope you can understand what i'm experiencing right now this is the kainakiri village which is part of the kutanada taluk and uh, kutanada as you know is the rice bowl of kerala and there are many 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 such huge uh, paddy fields at kutanada we will be showing you the qst kail uh, in detail later but uh, right now since i couldn't rest it so i've come into the paddy field one speciality about the paddy fields here at kutanada is that uh, the farming is done below sea level because kutanada is at um, a lower altitude uh, uh, located in a lower altitude so as you can see just imagine the people here are waking up to such a beautiful view and it's the best way to start the day and so i'm so lucky that i've spotted this place so i think uh, my canoe is here so let me quickly get on to that and show you the everyday life of the people here by going through the narrow canals of um, alapura While I walk back to the land, do not forget to register and vote for the next category of destinations in Kerala, which is village life experience. And I told you yesterday, uh, some of the voters get a chance to win a four-night stay at a premium KTDC hotel, and don't miss that opportunity. So right away, go and vote for the next category, village life experience. so my canoe has just arrived but uh, first and foremost safety is important so i am going to wear the jacket okay na parna jara endingil okku shraddhikkan undengil adu parna thanna madhi okay amma pedikkan onnilla engil life jacket undallo okay kannu chella na dhairu vattu keri alle irikkaya hmm मेन श्रद्धि जस्ट 
ശരിക്കും ഈ ഒരു പോർഷനിൽ തിരിച്ച് പിടിക്കണം അങ്ങനെ പിടിച്ചില്ലെങ്കിലും All right, so I've learned the tips and techniques of uh, rowing this and I hope I'm going to do the best here. Fingers crossed again. Let's go. All right so this is not a very difficult task so what you need to get a hang of it first if you like if you want to go forward you need to paddle backwards and vice versa um so it's it's quite easy and do not worry about your safety because uh, even if uh, through these canals the motor boats or the country boats pass by um there might be streams but then or the waves that Uh, will be created but uh, there's no need to worry about it you just need to stay stable and um, just paddle your way out through those waves and that's it and uh, you can actually come kayaking early in the morning there is sunrise kayaking as well as sunset kayaking sunrise kayaking starts at 5 a.m in the morning and uh, that's the best time to actually uh, go canoeing through the canals because um, there wouldn't be much of a um heat wave and um the feel would be really splendid so right now i think it's close to 8 o'clock so it's a little bit hot right now but if you choose to come to alapi and go for canoeing or kayaking make sure you come early morning or uh, late in the evening i have my fellow travelers with me enjoying the real life of alapura this is how the people here they travel daily from place to place imagine the struggle they might be taking every day to go through uh, these canals and to get their things and to move their daily life I've done one thing striked off my bucket list. Okay. All right, so my kayaking has just completed and I absolutely loved the experience of it. If you're coming to Alapura, make sure that you hire a canoe and go through the canals to understand the everyday life of the people here at Alapura. And this is how they traverse through the canals and go and get their things, uh groceries or everything that's needed for their life. So, uh do not worry about the safety because you have a life jacket as well as the instructor travels along with you. If huge boats or motor boats are coming our way, then make sure you go to the sides. There might be waves that the huge boats create, but just stand still and you're safe. And like I told you earlier, the instructor travels along with you, so do not worry about it. And it's always better to choose kayaking over houseboat uh, if you are in small groups. So I'm done and off to my next place so if you are at Alapi make sure you come here
Having completed kayaking, I'm just exploring the village life here, taking a walk uh, on the banks. Hello, Chichi. Hello. You have to go to the beach. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, okay. So, you have to go to the beach and go to the beach. How long do you have to go to the beach? Aha. Ah, okay. Apo daily mandi mandi pergi friends ke ayat itu, itu satu ulah si jatuh poli ane lewi itu mandi, semua orang mana beri cut. Share apa nak kita? Jadi, saya itu, saya nak ni beri bangi ke kanan beri cut. Share. Okay, so she is fishing right now for her purpose for her house, and this is usually a, a common scene that's uh, that you can see while you uh, visit Alpi. There are a lot of uh, fishing methods right now. She is just using a fishing rod, but there are a lot of methods that the locals here use for fishing, and I'm going to show you one such traditional method of fishing that is using the vishivala, or it's a casting net, and it's it's actually a technique. It's a skill. And you have to see how it's done because uh, the fishermen beautifully cast or hurls the uh, uh, net onto the surface of the water and it goes in a circular motion, falls in a circle on top of the surface um, and then it sinks down to uh, grab the fish. So it's a beautiful technique and uh, you need to have a hardcore skill in doing that. So I'm going to show you how this is done. Okay, so uh, this is the Vishwala. You know that most of the people here at Alapi uh, do fishing as their livelihood or for their livelihood. Uh, so I thought of trying this one. This is called the Chemminwala. It has to be thrown, um, you know, in this way onto the water surface and it should fall flat on the surface and immediately sinks down and uh, grabs all the fishes that's underneath this portion. Usually it's, uh, you know, uh, the fishermen go on boats and cast the net. It can also be done um, on the shores. Right now I'm not very expert at it, so I thought of not risking my life by going into the waters. Okay, so this is very heavy, about 7 kilograms. He says, I let her head 7 kilos and I'm already holding a portion of it on my shoulders. And you can see the sweat as well. So let me not wait for long. As I said, this has to fall flat on the surface. So I'm trying my luck right now. Okay. Oh my God, this was an utter failure and flop because this is not the way it has to be done. But uh, there's Chetan here who has been doing it for 20 years and I'm sure he can show us this in a better way. So this is the Vishwala. And uh, it should be, like I told you earlier, it should be hauled on the surface of the water. It should go in a circular motion and it should uh, sink deep and it will hold the fishes. But right now here, the um, there are obstacles underneath uh, and there are rocks and all that. So it shouldn't be, the net shouldn't be cast uh, on waters where there are obstacles under. And you won't get much fishes also. So it has to be done on a boat. But right now, Chetan will show you how the scale is beautifully done. technique that's exactly how it should be done right now like I told you there are no fishes here because of the obstacles so we are going to go in the boat and then catch hold of some fishes and come right back to the shore I'm going to All right, so, ah, 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 okay. Chata kya roll alay? Okay. All right, so, this is how they haul the, the fishermen here, haul the uh, net into the waters. 
So we are actually going to do that right now to show you how it's done in real. The earlier one was my practice session. So I think you should experience how it is done in real. You really need to balance the boat as well because uh, as I told you the net is very heavy. So I am... <laughs> I'm kind of sitting and not moving at all because I don't want to okay I don't want to bring any disturbance to the boat okay. so if you can see ah okay chair coming up okay so it's sinking it's sinking there namal ipo Okay, right now it didn't, he just pulled it off before it went, uh, it sinked in. Ah, ah, okay, probably. Right, right. Okay, so let's, let's try a shot more to see if we get some fishes from here. All right, so Chetan is all set to haul the net and we are hoping to catch some fish right now. Ah, ah, here in Jada. Okay. All right. Okay, I've asked the Chetan to let it sink in and just to check if we get some fishes there because if it doesn't sink in, we're not going to get fishes. Uh, because of the weight of uh, the net, the boat is actually disturbed. Okay. And then you get to see it. You died. Ah. Okay. Ella, ella. Okay. Yeah, so since the water is kind of constantly moving because we've been going off uh, on and off so we don't have fishes right now. We'll have to try it a few more times or probably go somewhere far from the shore to uh, get the fishes or probably there are obstacles down underneath and uh, maybe the fishes don't live here. Okay, so he gets about close to 600 to 700 rupees every day by selling the fishes that he gets through this process. Uh, so, whenever you are in Alapi, don't wind up your trip with just the snake boat, uh, seeing the snake boat races or going to the houseboats. But these are the little, little things that you have to experience while you're here at Alapi. The canoe rides through the canals and, uh, you know, in the boat, in boats of this sort, fishing in boats of this sort. Okay, so they were asking if we got some any fish, but unfortunately no. Uh, so yeah, like I told you, don't wind up your trip in Alapi with just uh, the snake boat races or houseboats. Make sure that you experience uh, the real life of the people here like Chetan with uh, fishing and uh, using the canoe, kayaking and all that. So make sure you do this while you're here at Alapi. I'm sure you all would have heard about the world famous snake boat races here in Alapi, Kerala. That's the Nehru Trophy boat race. 
This is the starting point of the Nehru Trophy boat race. Every year on the second Saturday in August, you can witness um, uh, the spectacular event here at the uh, Punnamada Lake. During that, that time of the year, the lakefront would be covered with about two lakhs of people, including tourists from around the world, to witness the spectacular event. The major attraction of the Nehru Trophy boat race are the Chundan Vallams or the snake boats itself. It can hold up to 120 men, including 95 oarsmen and um, a few handsmen and performers, singers. Totally, it's, it's a wonderful event that one must not miss. The course of the event is about 1,200 meters and on the way I'll show you the finishing point as well. The enthusiasm and zeal of the O's men and the performers all together directly transforms to the viewers and one must not miss this event and at least witness, come to Alapi and witness it once in their lifetime. Due to the fact that the Nehru Trophy boat race is only conducted uh, once in a year and uh, to preserve this traditional boat race uh, of Kerala, the Kerala Tourism came up with this new venture of Champions Boat Lake that uh, starts off in August uh, every year and uh, extends up to November. Uh, the Champions Boat League also starts at the same starting point of the Nehru Trophy Boat Race uh, but there are various venues for the CBL or the Champions Boat League and on November 23rd um, it, it winds up at uh, Kollam. This is the finishing point of the Nehru Trophy boat race. During the event, you can see a lot of VIPs uh, gathered here to witness uh, the winners of the boat race. Now, this is the Punnamada Lake, like I told you, and my journey through the Punnamada Lake comes to a halt. But stay tuned to watch more uh, uh, events and activities here at Alapura. I was on my way to Manar Bell Metal Town when I heard about this place at Kanyakuri, which recently shot to fame because of its photographic beauty. So this is the sunflower farm that was started by Mr. Sujit uh, as an intercrop uh, between the golden cucumber that is huge demand in Kerala during the Vishu season. I hope you can see the cucumber as well along with sunflower. Uh, so sunflower blooms uh, within 60 days after it's planted and dies off very quickly, I think about close to two weeks. Now when the sunflowers have completely dried out, the seed is taken and uh, used for producing sunflower oil. 
So uh, such farms, sunflower farms are very rare seen in Kerala. So people from all over the places have uh, swamped in to take photographs and conduct uh, wedding shoots and all that. It is really beautiful and we will be showing you in detail the farm and how it looks. While at Alapura, you can spot many, many small wonders of this sort uh, that has become major photographic locations. Mr. Sujit himself did not imagine that this place would get such immense response and probably many would be inspired from this and start uh, sunflower farming of their own. So I hope you have seen the beauty of the sunflower farm at Kanikuri and uh, let me take you to the next location which is Malnar Bell Metal Town. town between Mavelikira and Chirthala and this town has earned its name from its beautiful creations in bronze, brass and uh, silver. The craftsmanship displayed here at the Alekil Bell Metals is magnificent and it's also very famous across the world. About 200 to 400 years ago when the kings ruled the state, they brought craftsmen from Tamil Nadu to build temples. Now, building of the temples is a very tedious and time-taking process. So these craftsmen, they uh, eventually located to Kerala and they have settled here. Over time, they traveled to many places in Kerala to build temples and they've moved out of the groups and started working individually. And this became their profession. That is, they started making idols and vessels and utensils and all that. So like I told you, this is the Alakil Bell Metals and I was just going through what the craftsmen were doing over here. It's a very long process which starts with uh, mixing of the red sand and pebbles and stones. They make it into a powder first, then a mould is made out of this uh, powdered sand and it's kept for drying. Uh, this this mould is made along with clay as well, the powdered sand and the clay is mixed together to make the mould. 
which is dried and then a coat of waxing is provided on top of it wax is provided on top of it and then again kept for drying and again another uh, sand and clay mixture is layered on top of it it's heated which melts the wax and there's a space that forms between both of these molds it is into this space that the uh, molten metal is poured and when cooled down they breaks all these metals and it forms the final product Like I told you, this is a very long process which requires a lot of skilled and semi-skilled men and each stage of the process is handled by a different person depending upon their expertise. Only after the final product is broken out of the mould, they get to know whether this is a usable product or not because a single tiny mistake made during any of these stages would seriously tamper the quality of the uh, product that's made. So, now you know it requires a lot of uh, patience and a big salute to all these craftsmen following the traditional method whereby they could actually, uh, instead of going through the traditional method, they could have used the cast dye but instead they are very much into the traditions of Kerala and following the old method itself. Pebbles are especially placed to strengthen uh, the mould again and once this is dried it is heated to melt the wax so that you can see the process here right now that's the mould for a bell for a church bell but this is for a vessel and uh, they are actually melting the wax off I'm not sure if you can see it the hole here is full of wax that has been melted uh, from the mould over here now let me take you to the space where uh, these molds are coated with wax. So this is the place where the molten uh, wax is coated on top of the mold. And I also have the owner of the Arlenkil uh, Bell Metals here with me, uh, Mr. Rajan Ajari. Hello sir. How many years have you been ओके so this is the mold on top of which the uh, wax would be coated and this is used for this as you know this is in the uh, the temple lamp a portion of the lamps used in the temples and as you can see that's the wax the molten wax over there and uh, you can see how skilled this person is here he's actually uh, designing the very minute details that comes on top of uh, the temple lamps. All that intricate designs are done at this stage and uh, the yellow coating that you see is not the uh, metal, it's actually the wax. And once this is dried off, again uh, another layer of uh, sand and uh, clay mixture is placed on top of it along with the vessels. <laughs> So he's one of the most skilled craftsmen here at the Alakil Bell Metals. Is this a career? Okay. Is this a career? Yes. Okay. Is this a career? Yes. Is this a career? Yes. Is this a career? Okay. Okay. Almost, so this is almost done and then the powdered sand and clay mixture would be coated on top of it. Okay.
Like I told you earlier, they are still following the traditional method that their forefathers uh, used to follow. So they are not using the easy or the modernized method of the cast uh, die because of which this is time consuming so like they need a lot of time to finish a whole product it would take about one a lamp iyoru iyoru velakku theeran oru 15 days edukku etra 15 days edukku yeah about 15 days for a single product uh, to get completed so like i told earlier hats off to all these skilled people here ah okay yeah this is a bigger one and back coated but as you see the mold and uh, this is the inner portion but the wax has got the designs on it thank you so much sir So this is the final product that's made here uh the lamp and the mold that I showed earlier is the one that's for mold, that's used for molding the top portion of the lamp and I was curious about how you know you you get different uh, different uh, types of uh, lamps of different uh, thickness so I was quite curious to know what decides the thickness and I'm told that it's this this stick of wax so probably chetan can tell us how this stick actually decides the thickness of the lamp cheta nerthe parnallo ee oru sadhana aanu idinde aa thickness manasila ad engena engena nannu kaanichu thero four alle nammal idu koodaachi aa okay aa maatha idan adilo tottichu vekka alle okay അപ്പൊ അത് മറയുന്ന രീതിയിലാണ് ഇനി വാക്സ് കൊണ്ട് പൊതിയാൻ പോകുന്നത് അല്ലേ Okay okay so now he has actually uh, placed it on top of uh, the mold here and he'll cover that uh, small wax piece with uh, the uh, wax and that's how you know so it decides small wax piece decides the thickness of the mold Now let's see how that's really done What he's holding is the wax it's somewhat molded understood this stage of the uh, metal or the vessel creation or the lamp creation this is where the designing is done and the wax is coated on top of the mold now let's move on to the area where the final product or the finishing of the final product is done So this is the final stage of the metal handicraft making process and here is where the um, the product is actually smoothened there might be some rough surfaces after the mold cools off uh, so this is the area where it is actually smoothened and um, and the only stage in this process where machinery is used so there is a machine that you can find here which is actually used to smoothen the surface area of the product and also polishing is also done using a machine here which you can see on that side of this room 
I would also like to go and watch the polishing process. So this is again one of the product that is kept for polishing or the stage one of the polishing is done. It's very heavy, usually used in temples and some Kerala houses too. It's called cover It's very heavy and the first polishing is done and probably it goes through different stages of polishing to come as a product, I mean of this colour and this uh, you know finishing. Okay, Hapo, thank you Chara. So that marks an end to my visit of the Manar Alakil Bell Metals. A lot of foreigners come in here to uh, understand and learn this art of metal handcraft making. But there are only very few places in Kerala that actually follow the traditional method of uh, metal handcraft making. So this is one such place and if you are a Keralaite then you should definitely come to this place and understand this whole process. Probably a younger generation would have no idea about what this is all about. So show them this place and you also have a good view of it. While I go to my next destination, visit keralatourism.org website and register and vote for the next category of destinations that is village life uh, experience. And uh, all selected uh, travellers who register and vote would get a chance to win four nights stay in a premium KTBC hotel. So go and vote, I'm moving to my next destination. Alapura is not just famous for its backwaters and the snake boat races but it also hosts uh, some of the major heritage spots in Kerala. I am at one such location which is the St. Andrew's Basilica at uh, Arthangal in Alapi and this is one of the or this is the largest St. Sebastian shrine in the whole world and it's built by the Portuguese in the 16th century. But the church that you see right now is the modernized version of it but they've preserved the 15th century uh, church the way it was back then and it's right behind the church that you see right now. The interiors and the altar of uh, St. Andrew's Basilica is something that you have to witness for yourself.
So this is the St. Andrew's Church that was built in 1581. Initially it was made of wood and thatched roof and years later it was rebuilt with stones. But few more years later a new facade and a bell tower was also added. On my right is the church that you saw initially. Uh, it, is, it took about 60 years for this church to be completed and it's made up of granite. The biggest festival here at Arthungal Church is the Arthungal Feast itself which is celebrated every year in January and the celebration lasts for about uh, two weeks. People from different religions and different countries and states, they come here and celebrate the Arthungal Feast. It is during this part of the year or it is during this time of the year that uh, the famous statue of Saint Sebastian with the pierced arrows is shown to his devotees. Now, uh, it is also believed that uh, the pilgrims from Shabrimala Temple also visit uh, the Saint Andrew's Church and that's the perfect example for religious harmony. So when you visit Alapura, do not forget to visit the St. Andrew's Church. I'm at Karimadi village near Ambalapura in Alapi right now and this is the very famous Karimadi Kutan statue. It's an old uh, or very ancient Buddha statue that dates back to 11th century. It is made of black granite and probably that's the reason why it's called Karimadi Kutan. This site is under the protection of the state archaeology department right now and when the statue was recovered it was half broken as you can see. Now the presence of this Buddha statue makes this place a very famous uh, Buddhist pilgrim centre. Very quiet uh, and very peaceful place. There's the Karimadi canal flowing in front of the statue and uh, the banks of the canal are also very um, beautiful to watch. There are some seating arrangements here where people can come sit and relax. The Ambalapura Sri Krishna temple is also about 2.5 kilometers from here. So I'm going to spend um, probably next 5 to 10 minutes here before I go to my next destination.
the backwaters i have moved to alipi town and right now i am at one of the less explored but must visit place here that is ravi karnakaran memorial museum i should say this is a monument of love because it was built uh, by mr ravi karnakaran's wife after his demise uh, mr ravi karnakaran was born in alipi itself in 1931 and his grandfather was the first indian to put up a handloom factory to export koi products the family the three generations of the family has been very interested in collecting arts and artifacts from different parts of the world initially these items were kept in their house uh, as a personal treasure but later or after the demise of uh, mr ravi karnakaran his wife betty built this monument and has placed all the uh, items here as display so that's enough of the talking and enough of the history i think i should take you inside and show you all the exhibits here so come with me This is the marble statue of Mr Ravi Karnakaran. The display of all the art and artifacts in this museum starts right from here. The museum extends up to an area of uh, 28000 square feet and I heard that uh, there are about 1 lakh exhibits here. So to take me through all of that I think I need a expert here and I have the manager of the museum Mr Jagdish sir with me. Hello sir. Okay sir, uh, I already told about Ravi Karnakaran sir statue. So now can you please take me through all the other exhibits here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Important items la and the kya? Alla na. Okay. From different parts of the world. Okay. I think it's very clear for our viewers because it's written here and I, the museum is really beautiful sir because it's maintained in a very good way and also you've marked whatever you know from where all places you have got this from uh, very clearly everything done by the madam oh has, oh betty madam okay betty madam has uh, done all this idea. it's beautifully maintained and this is a uh, made of koi yarn she has traveled all over the world to get an idea so she has uh, done Okay. Yeah, it's it's very evident that she has traveled all over the world because you can see uh, artifacts or exhibits from Italy, Thailand, China, Vietnam. Okay. These are paintings Painting that she Canada brought from places. there. Okay. Then this is the equipment for uh, winding coir yarn. Oh, for the handloom industry. industry. Okay, okay, all right. This is collected from their factory. Ah, okay, okay. The picture is also shown very clearly here. Yeah. yeah. So this is used in the handloom industry, and uh, maybe you might not get an idea when it is placed on the wall. So to give you a more clearer picture of it, they have a snapshot here, and anybody can easily refer to this and, and understand what this is used for. these are hand embroideries ah yeah, correct correct there also you should actually come closer because this is hand embroidery work from china and vietnam and this is our petty ma'am and sir's family okay family. is made of coir fiber dust oh in between the coir fiber yes, yes, yes. dust you know yes 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 beautiful this made by kirti yeah, okay employees of uh, their company ha ah, okay okay so staff uh, is me right right so uh, their family has got coir industry here about uh, how many uh, i think uh, 100 year third uh, generation third generation of coir makers here and this is made from coir of fiber dust just imagine uh, the talent here maybe you should come a little more closer to see it's made from fiber dust okay can we go inside sir you inside? yeah Buick soap 
October. Okay, 1948 here. Yeah. Look at this beauty here. I think the main attraction uh, is this here, right? This. Oh, okay, so this is imported from USA uh, by Mr. Ravi Karnakaran's father in 1948. This is eight cylinder, right, yes. sir? Eight cylinder Buick Super. What a beauty. There are a lot of items here that I see. Okay. This is what you said, right, oh, sir? Yeah. Lover's, lover's chair. chair okay. Lover's this this chair is called lover's, lover's chair, chair because it is kind of interconnected for the lovers. It is ivory inlay. Okay, ivory, ivory inlay, right? Okay. okay. Tanjavur painting, Tanjavur. 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 Like, uh, more than 40 pieces are there. Okay, about 40 pieces of Tanjavur paintings are there in this museum. This is the Belgian glass, original Belgian glass. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's very, yes, yes, it's very, very clean and uh, so much of clarity. Looks like it's exactly another person standing opposite to me. Okay, I'm not supposed to touch. <laughs> this is Morocco, hand, okay. This is Morocco. Hand painted yes. Turkey, Turkey, porcelain. Ah, hand painted. Okay. These okay. are all hand painted. Yeah. Rosewood Almara. Okay, the very famous telephones Telephone. here. Onyx. Onyx telephone. These are ivory inlay, ta inlay yeah. tables, that is they make the design first and then fill it with ivory or ivory dust. So probably you can come a little bit closer to see the beauty of this. I think uh, it takes a lot of time to even create yeah. this, right sir? Yeah, so you actually make handmade, the handmade. design, yeah, you make the design and then uh, insert the, insert ivory, the pieces. ivory dust pieces, right? Can you come here closer? Hand carved door frame. Okay, hand carved door, door frame. frame. From Chettina. Chettina, okay. All right. There are one one major speciality of this is uh, I think uh, this museum gives a prominence to all the religions, right, sir? Hinduism or Christianity or uh, Islam, it gives a prominence to all the religions. This now, this is a Mandalay box. Mandalay box from Burma. Burma, okay. The jewelry on top, bottom clothes. Okay. This is giving as a dowry. Dowry, okay. Dowry okay. So, this is, uh, <coughs> you can keep the jewelry on top and uh, the clothes at the bottom and usually given as a dowry uh, in Burma. Okay, so these are Ravi, Ravi Verma paintings, right, sir? But then uh, this one, but then Tan, that is Tanjor painting only. Tanjor, but Tanjur. I think probably inspired from uh, yeah, inspired from Ravi Verma paintings, but Order. made in Tanjor. And, and sewing machines, and yeah, sewing machines. Everywhere there is Tanjor paintings. Yeah, this is the lover's chair. Like I told you earlier, it's interjoined or interconnected. It's made for the couples. Okay. Chinese screen, antique Chinese screen. This right. color itself is black, not painted. Original color is Oh, black. okay. The color of the wood the is... wood is color is black. Black. All right, all right. Okay. That's good. So, thank you so much, sir. I think there's a lot more to see, but Three I also... First floor is... Yeah, I also see a lot of guests yeah. also. Yeah. So, today is a busy day for him. This is uh, 
mural painting natural colors ah okay vegetable dyes it took 8 months three people work oh i see okay the wall. so this is mural uh, painting mural painting with uh, vegetable uh, dyes ah, or natural colors, natural colors. and uh, on this side i think this is north north india and on the other side it is kerala it took about 8 months for this to be completed with three skilled artists yeah okay thank you thank so you much, thank you so much sir thank you so much yeah i will go to the upstairs okay. and see the rest you want to go there that's ah okay it. that side also sure sir sure sir this was a boat but this is an hunting buffalo horn from cambodia look at the intricate designs here i mean this museum is something that i cannot express in words because it's first of all it's beautifully maintained and second thing is uh, revi sir and betty ma'am and betty ma'am alone has uh, traveled across the world and she has bought bought an items from each part of the world that she has been to and there's a beautiful family chart here which explains the from th third third generation itself their whole family and who all are there and everything is mentioned so well maintained and uh, when i'm coming in from uh, the backwaters to this space it's a complete drastic change but it's totally worth it because um, if i had not come to this space then i would have missed a lot as what i feel right now this is just the first floor of it there's more on the top so Let's go there. As soon as I get off from the lift, what I see is a shelf full of ivory items and i must say this is not the only shelf there are 1 2 3 4 five shelves of ivory items that has been registered with the government of kerala i must say probably this is one of those museums uh, private museums that has got the largest collection of ivory probably because they've got five whole shelves of ivory items there's emperor akbar's darbar in ivory small small statues like i told you there's a lot of importance given to all the religions here Rudraksham here, which is from the from a tree in Nepal. It's a berry from the trees in Nepal. And imagine these things were not, uh, you know, it was not bought with the purpose of starting a museum. This was the this was something that uh, Ravi sir and wife uh, loved to do, or their uh, family loved to do. They've collected all these items from the countries that they have visited. So this museum is also not uh, has not been started for the purpose of um, business, but in memorial of Ravi sir and uh, I must say, fabulous. Look at how. beautiful swarovski show pieces they've got and it's not again just one uh cupboard it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 probably 8 or 9 of them all of them filled with swarovski show pieces can you see the glow in it the glittering you you literally say right the glitter this is glittering
this room has been completely transformed to look like a traditional Kerala home with the Uruli and Poomacha. Okay, this is the ara that's used to store food grains. Manichitra Thara, which is the lock and then the famous Komba, the musical instrument of Kerala. Even the fans here, fans in this room are almost decades old. traditional Kerala home. I don't think even the modern homes now have been, uh, the traditional homes have been converted to modern homes. I don't think anywhere you can find an ambience of this sort. I'm right now going to the old museum which is on the first floor of uh, Mr. Ravi Karnakaran house and the corridors actually remind me of an old Malayalam movie. There are a lot of trees around and it feels so cool. This corridor feels very cool. This is their private collection on the first floor of the house uh, that Betty Ma'am lives in right now. collections. I just can't imagine a family having this background in three generations of having Goyer business has been collecting all these arts and artifacts since I think decades. Hats off to them. So this was a quick tour of the Ravi Karnakaran Museum at Alapura. Honestly, I did not get enough time to cover the whole thing. So if you are here at Alapura, make sure you have good two to three hours in hand to uh, visit this entire museum. Uh, not just the backwaters, but this is also definitely an attraction to uh, Alapura and maybe a lesser known gem, but definitely a must visit place. So do not forget to visit the Ravi Karnakaran Museum at Alapura. very long day today and I'm totally exhausted but the good thing is that I found the right place to chill and relax. 
This is Bohemia's Chilla Art Cafe, uh, which is an old picnic spot of uh, DTPC. And I've reached here at the right time because it is sunset and they've beautifully decorated the space with light. Every nature lover would love the Chilla Art Cafe because it's full of old trees. You could have your snacks and beverages under the shade of these trees. So while I have my coffee, uh, you should visit keralatourism.org and vote for your next category of destinations. That's Village Life Experience. Selected uh, people who vote and register in the Kerala Tourism website would get a chance to win four nights stay in a premium KTDC hotel. So while you do that, I'm going to go have my coffee. Totally relaxed for today. This place is full of music, full of art and full of life. So if you are at Alipi, never miss the Chilla Art Cafe. I'm dead tired today, but I think the journey in Alipi so far has been worth it. And I'm looking forward to the next few days also. Uh, I have a lot of place to explore here at Alipi. So stay tuned with me and watch the video for more stories of Alipi. houseboat right now in the middle of the backwaters and I had a pleasant stay last night as you can see this is a big room quite chilled and beautifully decorated imagine me sleeping here all alone seeing the backwaters how cool that is right so today morning also I woke up to this view and I saw the fishermen fishing and I think this is a chilled room but I guess the early morning breeze is something I really cannot explain. Uh, there are six rooms I believe in this houseboat and uh, there's an upper deck as well which I want to show you. My breakfast is waiting for me. There's a lot to do today so follow me to, to know more about this houseboat experience as well as to see around the houseboat. The corridor of this houseboat leads to three other bedrooms. One is mine, then one on the other side and two more here. There is a wash area and I guess all the bedrooms are of similar type, decorated in the similar way. All of them air conditioned as well as uh, bath attached, that's a point to be noted. It is the kitchen here and then the stairs to go to the upper deck. are two more bedrooms here. I think these are smaller ones compared to the one on the lower deck. But again, bath attached and uh, air conditioned. I think the upper deck offers a better clarity and better view of the backwaters and the land. Wow! Now this is the party hall. I think this is where they have their breakfast, the guests can have their breakfast, uh, lunch, even party. There are entertainment items arranged here. I, I guess anybody can hire a boat and even conduct a wedding here. Look at this, how spacious this one is. 
So the, like I said, the boat I am in, the houseboat that I am in is very huge. There are boats or houseboats of different type. The ones with uh, maybe two bedrooms or three bedrooms, even ten bedrooms. This is a houseboat with six bedrooms and offers a very good view of the backwaters and the land from the uh, top deck. So there's a captain here, then there are two oarsmen, there's a cook and a guide as well. They'll take you around the houseboat, they'll even uh, stop at a place where there's something interesting to see. It starts, the houseboat journey starts from 12 uh, in the noon and during the lunch time they usually stop nearby some uh, any of the banks and then you can have your lunch. Then it goes, journey starts again and goes to about 5.30 in the evening after which it comes to a halt and the guests can actually rest or party or sing, dance, whatever it is. As you can see, this, this space is huge, it's humongous and I, there are a lot of items that one can do in a houseboat here. Alright, let me just take a view from the outside. This is, this is mind-blowing. As I said, this is the upper deck. So I can see a better picture of the land and how beautiful Alipi is. Houseboat is actually moving quite, quite slow. And the gentle breeze, the sun rays, Oh, this is a breathtakingly beautiful view to die for, I must say. Alright, so they have a similar space at the lower deck also. So let me go right there and meet the captain as well. launch area of this houseboat as you can see it's pretty big very huge and beautifully decorated the ceiling has got uh, something that looks like the steering wheel every houseboat would have a launch area of this sort then there would be a kitchen bedrooms a sun deck that's the captain's deck and houseboats are actually a unique and finest experience that one can get in Alipi and uh, earlier the houseboats were uh, used for transporting, it was called Ketuvalam then, it was used for transporting large producers but right now they have been revamped and modernized to have these mini hotels or you can say literally these are hotels on water and it would have anything that any good hotel on the land can offer. So there is the captain's deck here and I really want, since I am on the houseboat I think it wouldn't be right if I leave it without steering having a hold of the steering so captain can on the okay chair na peru sinoj sinoj okay kore naal aayo ivide captain aayitte yeah all right in nammal car odikkunna pole thaniya le okay so i love driving so probably he said this is you can use the steering the same way as that how you drive so, our destination is Okay, so that's where our jetty is. So, I'm going to go there right now. And uh, the uh, accelerator. Okay, this is the accelerator. And there's the gear there. All right. Okay, we have a road in the road. We have a road in the road. Kyle. 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 Okay, okay. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, okay. Fine, I'm going to do a style and I'm going to do a style. Alright. Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. So, our destination is over there. And like how we have it uh, on the roads, there are areas that you have to avoid on the lake, lake as well. I was 
saying is like we have on roads the areas that you avoid similarly on the lakes as well there are areas uh, that you do not want to go to because it's shallow uh, and chatta that thra speed la povarikum 30 35 km okay okay 35 km la po ipo namak enna korchu de speed aakiyalo idalle okay okay ha okay i have the nice i alla okay all right there i go yan steering cheyina ega correct aano ini ingane steady aayittu vacha mathi alle okay all right there are small country boats here it's it's pretty sunny outside but uh, you know the lake water and the breeze that you get will not make you tired at all you feel really fresh my houseboat journey is coming to a halt i am about to reach my uh, destination right now so hope you would have liked our houseboat journey my houseboat was huge but if you are in smaller groups you can even look for uh, three bedroom houseboats or two bedroom houseboats but make sure that uh, you jump onto one when you are in alapi because it's a really good uh, experience that you should uh never miss all right so i'm off to my next destination and while i'm on my way to the banks do not forget to vote for the next category of destinations in kerala tourism website it's the village life uh, experience and travelers or people who register and vote on our website selected uh, voters would get a chance to win four nights stay in one of the premium ktdc hotels so don't miss the opportunity and i'm off to my destination first thing that you notice in kutnada is also the vast stretches of paddy fields and the beautiful lake waters uh, joining the canals it's a sight that um, everybody should uh, see once in their lifetime so these paddy fields as i told earlier were reclaimed in phases starting from 1900 uh, to the second world war when there was a scarcity of food and kutnada was the major center of food grain production at that time and hence kutnada is called as the rice ball of kerala so it was a person called as joseph murkin who actually um, coordinated the harvesting during that time and since he followed christianity religion he there was a church built for him at that time and that's the chitra uh, palli that we are going to see uh, like i said the uh, reclamation of the paddy fields or the land was done in phases and it was recordically named as q block in r block and s block but um, the backwaters or the kail was named after the travancore royal family's name uh, like suppose if it was the uh, chitra tirunal uh, king who came to harvest at that time then the kail was called as the chitra kail it was if it was the queen it was the rani kail and that sort but recordically it is called as q block s block t block and r block like you have the junctions on roads this is a junction in the backwaters or the kail where um, as you can see it's it's like joining from all the four directions uh, houseboats from the alapura side would come from my right and from kumaragam if it's from kumaragam it's from my left and this is the point where they all halt 
to watch uh, you know the whole space around the coconut palms the greenery bird watchers would have a very good sight here and of course an added beauty the chitrapalli here Chitrapalli or the Chitra Church that was built in 1950s by Joseph Murikin. It has got an old rustic and ancient look and it is definitely beautiful to watch. Right now no ceremonies or worshipping is done here but uh, I see some candles on the sides of the windows probably people are coming in here by their choice and lighting the candles and this was one of the first religious centers in this Kainikari area of Kuttanada. Kuttanada is a very vast area that spread across three districts in Kerala but the major portion of Kuttanada is in Alappi district itself. While cruising through the houseboats or country boats or the shikaras, you can see many monuments of historical significance on the banks. You also can see people uh, doing their daily routines, activities for their livelihoods like the fishing and uh, you know casting or hurling of the nets. Uh, fishing using the fishing rods. There are so many canals that link the backwaters and you can probably do kayaking there, go canoeing to go into deeper and narrower uh, canals to see more of the real life of uh, Alapi. So right now my backwater cruising and backwater journey is almost completed and I'm going to go to my next destination. So you have a good view of the backwaters in Alapi and uh, do not forget to vote for our next category of destinations that is Village Life Experience. Backwaters, I've now come to a place called Kalavur, which is few meters away from the Alapura town. One of the major and significant attraction here is the International Choir Museum. Right now, I am at the International Choir Museum, which is under the Choir Board. As you know, Alapi is called the uh, cradle of choir in India. It is here, it is an Alapi or it is an Alapura that uh, the first manufacturing sector of the choir industry uh, was established. It was an Irish American called James Darrow who established this uh, first manufacturing industry of choir which produced mats and mattings back then. 
there are a lot of things to be shown around here as you can see a beautiful spiral created just right behind me uh, this was what welcomed me to this museum and i see from here a lot of beautiful um, i think beautiful would be underrated magnificent and splendid creations in koya here so let me take you around this place and let's move on Taj Mahal made of koir is the first displayed item here at the museum when you enter there is also a lady and a man wearing uh, dresses made of jute if you can see the saree has also got some koir attached to it which looks really fashionable starts with the history gallery first which showcases the two most important people who brought this industry uh, to alpi that is james dara and henry smale this these are their statues and there is a huge there's a long explanation on what uh, the history of the koya factories here in alpi as well as in kerala there is a huge illustration of the establishment of the koya industry in alpi probably that's Uh, James and Henry discussing about uh, setting up the industry here in Alappi. It's a beautiful illustration by Mr. Ajayan. All right. Okay. Moving on. There are a lot of items here. Okay. Let's move on to fiber extraction and spinning. Another aim of the International Koya Museum is to explain to the newer generation on what are the different stages uh, of koya extraction uh, or koya making process that was followed before now that uh, the industry has developed there are a lot of technological advancements that has happened but uh, the intention of the museum is also to show how this was done in traditional old method there's a lady beating up the fiber from the coconut husk if you remember the kerala virtual tour from trivandrum you would definitely remember us showing you all these things there is the arachiri rat so these are the machines that's used for ratting different types of it and correct explanation of what this is about so that you get an idea of uh, you know what the machine is used for there is a vajra spinning machine which is a more complicated one or probably the reason one that they have been using this is the brisk fiber brisel fiber there's a cage probably it's a parrot <laughs> very cute one i guess we have not much explored or seen anything of this sort uh, in koya earlier so the international koya museum is definitely a must visit place it shows what your traditions your heritage your cultural heritage here in kerala so all keralites must definitely visit this place let's move on to the next area now okay there is a separate room for machinery let's check out that place okay so i guess these are the sophisticated machines that are being used the silon type com combing drums mobile fiber extraction machine this is the automatic spinning machine there is a braiding machine here so you see how from you know beating up the fiber from the husk to the sophisticated machines how the industry has evolved and this museum exactly wants to show this whole process of how 
what all advancements the industry has gone through. Probably it's they are trying to preserve this tradition of uh, koya making also in Kerala. And it's beautiful and it's a good initiative by the uh, koya board itself. There is a shearing mesh machine and anugraha loom. Alright, so that's it about the machines. Let's move on to the next area. You do not need a guide here because everything is displayed in English as well as Malayalam if you want to read through. Okay, now this is, this is interesting. Wow, that's a beautiful Kerala house made of Koya. Koya wood house, okay. Okay, so that is wood plus Koya. Okay, so this is wood plus coir. If you touch, you can understand it's coir. There is a star. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to get in, but I do not mind going in. I guess that's a Kaya hmm, pillow too. Alright, so this is the Kaya and Wood House. Beautifully done. There is an umbrella here which again says do not touch. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. There are some Koya garden articles here. Hanging baskets and nylon net, cocoa pot, fiber discs. Okay, moving on. So there are a lot of age old pictures displayed here which shows the traditional methods of uh, brizzle fiber uh, um, extraction and coir making. Interesting to see because this is a very age old traditional method, right? And livelihood of a lot of people. So it's good to understand that evolution of it. I think that's it of the museum. So I'm at the souvenir shop at International Coir Museum in Alipi. Travellers can actually come in and buy items made of Koya from here and take it. As you know, it is one of the uh, livelihood of people here at Alipi, the Koya making. So, buying products from it is actually a souvenir and will really give the mark for Kerala. There's a beautiful tree made of uh, fibre. And the price is also very reasonable considering the effort that these craftsmen uh, put in to create these items. Uh, the price is very reasonable. So if you are visiting Alipi, uh, come to the International Koya Museum and definitely you should visit the souvenir and get something from here to keep it as a memory of your visit to Alipi. There is also a huge idol of uh, Lord Ganesha displayed here that is made in wood and the interesting fact is there is a little you know, baby elephant as well as a mouse also that's made of Koya here. How cute isn't it? So from the International Museum I am moving on to the National uh, Koya Training and Design Centre which is just close by attached to the museum and we'll show you what is being done here. From the 
International Choir Museum, I have now moved to the National Choir Training and Design Center. This institute is one of its kind in the whole of India. The main aim of the National Choir Training and Design Center is to develop skilled manpower capable enough of working in the choir industry. It also gives opportunities for the students to identify the uh, job opportunities or self-employment opportunities in the choir industry. Also, the choir sector is advancing, it's evolving. There are a lot of technological advancements also that's coming into the industry. So, a student who's taking or undertaking a course uh, here in this institute would get to know the advancements or technological advancements in the choir sector. National Choir Training and Design Center offers free diploma courses for 10th and 12th pass along with stipend. If you are a 10th pass, the course is for 6 months duration and if you are a 12th pass, it's going to go for close to 1 year. After passing out or after finishing the course, uh, these students have got high, op high chances of getting a job opportunity in the choir um, industry or choir production or manufacturing industry. Even they could start their own business uh, for which the government will give a subsidy up to 40%. So right now this is the institute uh, but the students have gone for lunch so I really cannot uh, talk to them to understand their experiences here. But if you see on that side it's done in different uh, stages or there are different processes carried out here. On that side it's the choir then over here it is um, the mats then mattings and there's an area for dyeing the choir. So it's a whole big space which I'm going to show you around right now, so just follow me. This is a huge loom for producing multicolored mattings. As you can see, the yarns are of different colors here. And uh, if you need to produce mattings of different colors, it is a different loom, which is this one. But on the other side, uh, I think it's to this side, uh, there are looms where only a single colored mattings is produced. And uh, over the other side, there are looms specially designed for producing flow mats. So that's it, I'm winding up the tour of the Koya Museum as well as the Koya Training and Design Centre. There are about 60 students studying in this centre from different parts of the world and anybody who is visiting the Koya Museum can also come in and experience the process of uh, Koya making or flow mat making, mattings making and it's going to be a different experience because this is not something that you get to see every day, right? So make sure if you're visiting Alpi, come to the Koya Museum. The uh, training center is very much close to it or it's in fact attached to it and you can see the process of Koya making here. Alright, so let me go to my next destination and follow me for more stories of Alpi. Choir Museum at Kalavur, I have now moved closer to the Alapura town. As you all know, Alapura, apart from offering a visual treat to its visitors, it also has huge historical importance. According to the historians, Alapura had trade relations with Greece and uh, Rome in the Middle Ages. The literary works from then, as well as the wall carvings and paintings in temples and churches, also reveal the same. So in order to conserve this um, cultural and historical heritage of Alapura, 
government of kerala has come up with a new plan or project called alappura heritage project as per this plan uh, 20 museums 11 monuments and 5 public spaces will be revived the uh, historical and the cultural structures in the town will undergo a conscious uh, preservation or conservation but maintaining the initial or the first looks of the structures this whole uh, monuments will be revived The Alapura Heritage Project starts from the beach road and includes the commercial canal, the Vada canal and the link canal. And once this project has completed, it, is, it will definitely attract a lot of visitors who come to Alapura for the backwaters or the houseboats. This is going to be a real or a hot spot for the tourists here coming to Alapura. So right now I am at one of the sites of the Alapura Heritage Project and this is the Leo 13 school in Alapura town. The school was established in 1888 by the Diocese of Cochin and was handed over to the uh, Jesuits. Later when the Diocese of Alapura parted from the Diocese of Cochin, uh, this was taken back and it's now undergoing uh, renovation through the project of uh, the heritage project. As you can see, the architecture really reflects the olden ages and it has a beautiful uh, portrait of the Pope uh, Leo XIII. And uh, our Honorable Chief uh, Minister of Kerala has inaugurated the project over here, the Alapura Cultural, uh, Alapura Heritage Project here, and the work is still ongoing. The other sites that are undergoing um, the heritage project or are part of the heritage project are the Sokar Masjid, uh, the Koyar Museum, the Labour Movement Museum and so on. About, um, about a heritage of about 300 years will be displayed through this project and will definitely be an attraction for the tourists coming to Alipura. After the renovation has completed, you have more reasons to visit Alapura. I will be really looking forward to coming here and seeing the renovated version of the school as well as the many monuments that are undergoing renovation through the heritage project. So I'm done exploring this place and right now I'm moving to my next destination. So stay tuned to see the next destination. Here I am at the Alapura beach and I'm winding up my journey in Alapura in the beach itself. But before I go, a hot news to all the art enthusiasts. Uh, if you are looking to visit Kerala during the time of April to June, then you are hell lucky to witness the uh, Logami Tarawada, which means the world is one family. It is a large scale curated art exhibition, contemporary art exhibition that will be conducted in uh, many venues here in Alapura. About more than 260 artists from across the state would be displaying their uh, artworks in various venues. If you have heard of the Maziris Binale, 
Uh, in Kochi, then definitely this is also one that you have to look out for because this is also conducted and organized by the Mazidis Binale along with the Department of Tourism, Department of Culture and many other departments in the Kerala state as well as the organizations. Pictures of this sort and the illustrations and the installations of many artists will be displayed across the Alapura town. So this is something that you have to look forward to in the coming days in Alapura. So, I have one more place to visit here in the beach which is the Vijaya Park. You know, Alapura beach is very famous uh, with family, a lot of people coming in with their family and kids. So, Vijaya Park is one hot spot that they all look for. So, right now I am going to go to Vijaya Park and see what's happening there. DTPC Vijaya Park right now. This is a major hotspot for family and children to relax. Uh, this is in the heart of the city and very close to the Alapura beach as well. So if you have some time while visiting the Alapura beach, make sure that you come in here with your kids because this is exactly what they would be looking for. There are a lot of rides here and also this park uh, provides boating facilities. I see a lot of people here, I think irrespective of the day of the week, there are a lot of people coming in to this beach. It is a good spot or in fact a very good spot uh, to see the sunset as well. So while you see around the park and uh, the kids playing and enjoy the sight of it, I'm going to have a quick dress change and head to the beach because I want to see the sunset and we'll be concluding our day today uh, of the Alapura trip today at the beach. So over to the visuals of the Vijaya Park. right now which is in Alapura town itself. This is one of the major tourist attractions in Alapura. If you can see there is an old fire that extends up to the sea which is about 150 years old. And also the latest attraction here is the uh, Alapura Kochi highway that you can directly see from uh, the beach itself. Very long beach and extends to a large area and I think it's starting to rain as well now. What a good way to end my visit or journey here at Alapura, right? I had a wonderful time with the backwaters, the canals, kayaking and fishing, casting the net, hurling the net. There are a lot of activities that one can enjoy while being at Alapura. So never miss a chance to come to Kerala and enjoy the backwaters, the rains, the sea, the beaches. Alapura has everything that it needs for the tourist. So before I wind up, don't forget to register for our next category of destinations that is Village Life Experience. Woohoo, it's raining! <laughs> Village Life Experience. So uh, boat and the tra selected travellers are going to get uh, Four nights stay in a premium KTDC hotel, so don't miss the chance and I'm going to enjoy the rain and the beach. Come back to you again. Bye-bye.